I love me some James Worthy, okay? No doubt. And I remember the first time that I was at my golf course and I saw him walk up to tee off with some of my friends and I just kind of, there, you know, it's rare. It's rare that I get starstruck. Uh, but I was pretty, pretty impressed with this, this man because of not only his career, but just kind of the longevity of it, the Hall of Fame, the, the person that he is. And now I've gotten to know him and I feel like I've become a friend of his. And it's so great to welcome our next guest, NBA Hall of Famer and Lakers studio analyst, Mr. Big Game James Worthy. Welcome, James. If I could, if I could only hit a golf ball like you, man. If I could only hit a golf ball <laughs> like you that. and score like you do. What's up, Ryan? How you doing, brother? I'm good. Thanks for being here, man. Good. Um, yeah, I was telling the guys that you are kind of a muse of mine. You and John Ireland. Uh, every time I played with you guys this summer, this fall, I played out of my head. I don't know why, but you guys seem to bring the best out of me. Thank you. Well, you know, uh, it's the company you keep. Uh, you know, so we, we have a good time out there, man. We, we get a little bit competitive. You know, we've had some, some clutch putts <laughs> at the end of a round on the 18th. Hall one you missed by a centimeter, and then that freaking John Ireland, you know, he's got the lucky putter. But we have a lot of fun. You know, that's what it's all about. You know, it's, we we fellowship. Yep. To me, Ryan, it's the closest thing that I've had to a locker room uh, since I retired is, you know, golfing with you guys, golfing with my groups, playing for 50 cents a hole, and, you know, having fun so I, I enjoy it yeah that's that's exactly the word i used i think after the you know third or fourth time we played that there's just a fellowship there's something about being a former professional athlete regardless of success just the understanding and what the transition's like afterwards and being able to find that commonality so i i definitely agree with you um Let's go. Let's go to the NBA scene right now and the team you cover and the team you played for your entire career. Uh, the L.A. Lakers right now are without their two star players and have lost four in a row, fallen to fourth in the standings. What uh, what does this team have to do to find a way to manage to stay in the race for the playoffs when their stars aren't there to help them? Well, we we all know. Uh, they got to try to win, and they got to try to sustain uh, a level of play until they're healthy again. Uh, now, when that'll be, I don't know. Uh, the unfortunate thing uh, for the Lakers, and this is no excuse, you have the injuries, uh, but coming out of the bubble, uh, turn the season around, and then you know, not having quality practice time, they got to do this on the fly. Now, they've lost four in a row, but I'm seeing a, a little trend of, you know, how to play without LeBron and AD. If they could just put four quarters together, I thought they played well uh, last night, except for the third quarter. Uh, they got some issues. They don't have a rim protector. But they'll, they, the, but these are guys that, that are in the NBA, and, and they have to find a way to win the games. For instance, they got Cleveland coming up. And I think uh, I can't remember who they have after that, but two games that I think they got a good chance at winning, and they got to win those games, and then they got to try to pick off uh, uh, some of these other 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 games. They almost had a chance against Philadelphia, um, you know, they just couldn't close it out when they got it to five. So they got to maintain, they got to sustain, and not dip too far. You don't want to have that play-in game, so. That's their biggest challenge. Um, if hundred percent, if this team is hundred percent, if AD stays out as long as they need to until he's truly healthy and LeBron comes back, are they are they the the best team in the NBA or at least the West right now? I'd put them in the top three. You cannot say that they're the best. Now I'm biased. I'm always going to say, yeah, with their bench and they're healthy, for what their bench can do and what A.D. and LeBron bring to the table, I'm definitely going to pick them. Uh, but you look at Brooklyn, you know, uh, you gotta, you got to look at the reality of the NBA. Has 
and 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 with the trade deadline passed, and with some of the players that Miami picked up, and the Clippers getting Rondo, and you know the Celtics making some moves, and you know so um, there are some really good teams out there, man. Denver, Utah. So uh, I would say that the Lakers are right there. With Brooklyn, you know, the Clippers are good. Utah, you know, Denver, those are the teams that uh, – Milwaukee. Um, there's no there's no advantage uh, with the Lakers uh, uh, being healthy. So uh, that's the way I look at it. And But the thing is, they got to be healthy. Speaking of that health, they've dropped to fourth in the standings. And with the play-in games like they had a year ago with the bubble – uh, there's a there's a reasonable chance that if they don't get healthy in 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 quick time, they could fall down to a place where it could come down to one game. Uh, but if LeBron and AD are able to go in that one game, I don't think it's an issue. But if they're not, if there's a a chance that it it weighs on one game, and the Lakers didn't get to the playoffs this year, how would it be viewed? in a year where there was so much injury? Would it be viewed as a wasted year? Would it be viewed as a year that just, you know, we're waiting for the next? How would people in the optics look at a, a Lakers team that doesn't make the playoffs in, in 2021? Well, I, I think anybody that that understands, you know, sports, I don't. I think it would be unfortunate uh, to say that they had a horrible season and they're, you know, all the money they spent and the trades that they made. Right. Uh, had to come to fruition, you know, especially coming off a, of a, a championship year, uh, having a short turnaround. But it would be disappointing. Let's make let's make no question about it because, you know, uh, the Lakers are expected to be in the playoffs. Now, I'm hoping we'll get AD back maybe in a couple of weeks or three weeks maybe. So if we can get him back without LeBron, not saying that that's going to be an instant change, but I think, in my calculation, if this had happened in April or some, there's enough time left. I think four to six weeks. That you know, we get LeBron back for I don't know. I, I haven't done the calculation. We get him back for maybe eight or nine games at the end of the regular season, perhaps with AD. And I think if these guys sustain it, but you're right. If they get into that that one game scenario, that's you don't want to be there. And it would be disappointing, but I think for me, I'd I'd have to look at why, and you know, having your two elite players out uh, to me would, you know, would would wouldn't be an excuse, but you have to take it into account. Is there? Uh, we're, we're talking to James Worthy, basketball Hall of Famer, NBA Hall of Famer, and Lakers studio analyst. Um, is were you surprised that the Lakers didn't make any moves at the trade deadline? And is there a possibility with some of these buyouts coming that they could make um, some waves with getting somebody that could bolster this roster in the meantime? Yeah, I, you know, I'm surprised. I mean, it's it's a it's a sticky situation. I mean, you look at the the players they're looking at, which is you know uh, from Cleveland. Um, um, God, I'm drawing a blank. Goodman, uh, Drew. Uh, who's the center from Andre from, Drummond? From Cleveland, that they were. Yeah, I'm. I'm sorry, I got to draw a blank. It's early for me. Uh, <laughs> Drummond, uh, you know the buyout. It, it's it's good now. Um, we don't have to give up any players. You know, I think Cleveland probably would, you know, give him. I don't know eight million or something like that. I think he's close to eleven or something. I think the Lakers could do that. Two million, three million for. But then he'd be a free agency. Um, he's 27. Uh, does he want to win? Yeah. Does he want to necessarily make two million dollars, or does he want to perhaps? I mean, the New York could pay him 15 million. Right. That's an up and coming young team with Julius Randle. He might, you know, take that that situation. So I I, I, I kind of understand that Aldridge is 35, and so I, I don't know. It's it's it was it was it was tough. I think if they could have gotten something, they would have Lowry. Um, you know what they they decided not to to do that. So this is what we have. We have to count on getting guys back healthy. I think had it been something available, the uh, Rob Palinka was not interested in talking about you know Tucker for any 
you know, swap or trade. So this is the, the, the place you find yourself in when you're injured. If they weren't injured, you know, we probably wouldn't be talking about any of this, but we have to. Uh, but I, I just, you know, the, the thing we bank on now, and it's all we have, all we have now is that we get everybody back healthy. That's it. And if, if we don't, uh, then then you're looking at, you know, a situations a little more bleak than, you know, than, than it could be. We're talking to James Worthy here, NBA Hall of Famer, Lakers studio analyst here on the Rich Eisen Show. I'm Ryan Leaf uh, filling in for Rich. Uh, we'll get you out of here with this question. Um, Chris Brockman and I were talking about this new HBO show, you know, Showtime, about the Lakers team and the book that Jeff Perlman read uh, or wrote, and and people are starting to be announced who are going to play these these stars. And, and as, as, as time the show started – there isn't a person uh, slotted to play James Worthy yet. Do you have any opinions on who should play James Worthy in the Showtime HBO show coming out next year? Uh, maybe, maybe I'm not in. Maybe I'm not in the movie, man. I might not be in the documentary. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I don't have any details, man. They might have. You know, I might have got the short end of the straw. I don't know. I mean, you know, person, we, the, man, the story you can't know, be man. told of the the Showtime Lakers without. Somebody portraying <laughs> big game James. I'm sorry, that's just that's Man, impossible. Give me, uh, give me uh, Sidney Poitier, uh, Denzel, <laughs> Denzel. Uh, my, my my good friend who I've known a long time, Leon. Leon's been around for a while. Um, you know, I don't know, man. It'd be tough. It'd be tough. I don't know who even looks like me. Uh, a Cleon. If they can you dunk, Cleon, all, all they have to be able to do is dunk. I think, and and they probably you know they're probably gonna have the baskets at like eight foot. Four or something like that when they play yeah, on, them. yeah, yeah. You know, have a, have a beer. You know, look serious all the time. You know, that, that, that <laughs> wear the wear the knee pads, right? The goggles, the goggles. Yeah, wear yeah. goggles. There you go. I like it. I like it. Hey, uh, <laughs> James, thanks for thanks for doing this, man. It was awesome seeing you yesterday. I look forward to getting out on the course with you again sometime soon. Uh, um, we'll we'll chat with you again when we know more about this Lakers situation. Thanks again, brother. You got it, Ryan. Have a good one, brother. James Worthy, everybody. Big game James, and uh, NBA Hall of Famer. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.